शर्मा सर वेलकम गुड आफ्टरनून आप एकदम तैयार है बिल्कुल बिल्कुल सर बिल्कुल तैयार हूँ या दिस विल बी आवर आई थिंक फर्स्ट सच काइंड ऑफ लाइव डेमो लाइव डेमो मीन्स थ्रू ऑनलाइन येट बट कीपिंग ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट एंड एवरी वन इन्वॉल्व एस एम एस आपको तो मोबाइल नंबर मिल गया होगा हाँ मोबाइल नंबर मिल गया हम दो दो प्रोडक्ट दिखा रहे हैं सर ठीक है एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड एवरीथिंग वेरी बिजी पर्सन बट हीज ब्रेन एंड एवरीथिंग इज फिजिक्स He studied physics, uh, but is very much uh, enthusiastic about the new technology and know-how. So, welcome, uh, Thakur sir. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, Shailesh. Uh, Shailesh. Shall we start? Yes, sir. sir. Yeah. Shall we? Yes, sir. We can start. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Our topic for today's webinar is role of IoT devices in early warning system. First of all, I would like to thank our executive director, sir, Sri Tajasan, sir, for allowing us to conduct this webinar. And uh, I, I would like to welcome uh, our JD, Surendra Thakur, sir. Uh, very welcome, sir. And I would like to thank and give a warm welcome to our guide and mentor, Professor Ghosh, sir. and special thanks to our respected speaker and participant on behalf of idm and idm uh, i welcome you all myself shesh divedi i am serving in idm as a junior consultant under the ri division now i welcome the convener of the webinar dr garima agrawal who is senior consultant in the resilient infrastructure thank division you. thank uh, you shesh yeah uh, uh thank you very much shesh and uh, uh, good afternoon to everyone I welcome all of you on behalf of National Institute of Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, and Government of India. It is indeed my pleasure to convene today's webinar on an important topic that is uh, Internet of Things devices for early warning system. And I feel immense pleasure to welcome Professor Chandan Ghosh, who is Head Resilient Infrastructure Division, NIDM. Um, Mr. Surendra Thakur, who is Office in Charge and Admin Consultant, NIDM. Mr. Rajesh Sharma, Chartered Engineer, Soft Chip Instrumentation. Welcome, sir. Uh, Dr. Shailendra Kumar, Assistant Professor, Miranda House. He has not joined as yet. I hope he must be joining soon uh, from University of Delhi. And my colleagues who are representing the panel of today's meeting, I welcome all the participants who have not only joined from Delhi but also from various part of country. Some of the neighboring countries have also registered the program. or wholeheartedly i welcome all of you to take out the time to attend this webinar on a, an important topic as you all are aware that national institute of disaster management is responsible for capacity development on disaster resilience in india and we keep on organizing different uh, uh, training programs webinars consultations on uh, with along with various stakeholders of the country in the field of disaster management we also provide internship research opportunities to the young professionals and students who are doing masters phd btech programs and also conduct several online training programs and all those details are also available on our websites it is only for the general information i am telling so that and i you can explore more opportunities on nitm website uh, we are in particular are part of resilient infrastructure division which primarily focusing on building knowledge and capacities on issues pertaining to infrastructure resilience and risk mitigation as we all are aware that our country is affected by natural and man made disasters such as floods cyclones earthquakes wind storms uh, fire chemical and industrial accidents and extreme weather events and so on one of the most challenging task is to install reliable and early warning system which can automatically detect the hazardous event and pre predict the warning and forecast warning based on the precursors and the past data at the shortest possible time so early warning system uh, which is supposed to be one of the most uh, cost effective risk mitigation measure 
against disasters, which provide timely information on future as well as ongoing events to reduce losses of life and damages. We can effectively manage the disaster risk if the suitable warnings are reached to the decision makers, emergency support functions, concerned departments, and most importantly, communities. So uh, in during last uh, one decade, I should say that uh, uh, there has been uh, a lot of technological advancement in this particular field. And today in the era of internet and World Wide Web, it is considered as one of the most effective mitigation measures as it is in, and is an essential part of integrated approach of risk reduction strategy. It is uh, a cost effective and and, uh, and, uh, and the one such installation which has lowest impact on the environment as well. If we talk about the disaster mitigation and prevention, these devices can be used for real time data collection of flood levels to detect wildfire volcanoes, cyclones, and fires. And such timely information will uh, help us to take necessary measures to reduce risks and associated with human infrastructure. In today's webinar, we are going to talk about such IoT devices, which are internet connected devices like camera, microphones, GIS applications, transmitters, and so on, which can be used for strengthening the existing early warning systems. We have Mr. Rajesh Sharma, who will be going to demonstrate us on how to use such facilities for improving uh, mitigation and response. We would be connecting, conducting a live demonstration uh, in today's webinar and would be happy to connect with all the participants of the program as a part of the demonstration. Those who want to be part of this demonstration, I would suggest uh, that they can share their mobile numbers in the chat box personally to the NIDM, uh, to the Shreyas, uh, or to me. So a few of you will be contacted by SMS uh, uh, as a part of a demonstration exercise. So uh, I welcome once again all of you, and uh, I look forward to have a fruitful discussion, demonstration, and a exhaustive uh, panel knowledge, knowledge of exchange. Thank you so much. Over to you, Shreyas. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh... Uh, now I would request uh, uh, Professor Ghoshar ki, uh, uh, to allow us to start the webinar and uh, demonstration. And uh, uh, sir, can we start? Our yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it is cool. yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so our first session is today is not about the lecture or any theoretical topic. It is about a practical demonstration which we are going to see. So, uh, for this, uh, we have. Uh, 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 we have uh, engineer Rajesh Sharma, sir. He is chartered engineer and member secretary National Safety Council. He has his own company. This name is uh, Soft Chip Instrumentation, and they make low voltage IoT devices for various purposes like fire security, automation, uh, automation, etc. Uh, thank you so much, uh, sir, for joining us on very short notice. Thank you very much. So, sir, over to you and uh, uh, you, sir, carry on, sir. Now the Desk is yours, sir. Thank you. Okay. So me, uh, Sharma, sir, uh, you can. Uh, uh, huh? Yes. Are you audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, you can start, sir. Uh, Professor Ghosh, uh, uh, sir, would be. Yeah. Uh, uh... Yeah, I would be happy to hear from you, sir, and then we can start the demonstration, I think. Professor okay, Kosh. okay, yes. okay. So, uh, of course, uh, today's star uh, presenter is engineer Rajesh Sharma. And uh, he is, in fact, uh, has taken a grand responsibility of uh, honorary secretary of uh, Delhi State Center Institute of Engineers recently, I think January onward. You have been able to... yeah, February, 14 February onward. 14 February onward. Yeah. So we'll be uh, going to, uh, and moreover, uh, he is having a lot of experience in making IoT devices. So this program, in fact, we have planned uh, keeping that thing in mind that let us also still keeping social distance in mind as well as in our mobility, but still uh, IoT system. When you talk about IoT system, uh, then why not? make it also online so that we can have one-to-one -one connections which uh, is planned uh, very Absolutely. nicely which our 
participants are going to experience. Uh, please, you provide your uh, mobile number in the chat box as uh, required. Then a message will go to you, and you will uh, share carry on the respond accordingly. What Mr. Sharma is going to uh, carry forward after my brief presentation about the IoT devices and other things. Shall I share? Yes, yes. Now, uh, first of all, we give the product. What is the IoT device and uh, how to we start a presentation? Just I share, just I the, show the physical. I think this is the Raspberry Pi. Is the IoT devices having? Is basically is the mini computers having the, all the things like the internet, Wi-Fi, iOS. Everything is there. And another is the device which is the SIM based. Another device which is the SIM based. This is a SIM based. All the operation based on the SMS. During the activation, it gives the own location also. We have recently for the two product is the online demo. And before starting, I give those simple small video for your fire detection purpose. Just I play. So we still have play. Just now, I start from the beginning. Uh, Rajesh, sir, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, ek, uh, ek part, yeah, yeah. Uh, ek एक पार्टिसिपेंट ने भी अपना नंबर शेयर किया है मैं उसे आपको शेयर कर रहा हूं कैन वी ऐड दैट वन आल्सो अच्छा सर मैंने अभी जस्ट आपको एक नंबर और भेजा है एक मिनट एक मिनट सर देता व्हाट्सएप उस पे होगा ना व्हाट्सएप इस पे भी मिल जाएगा there are two three more numbers which are coming so can we add that is possible yes can i send it to you two three numbers more uh, there are many numbers in the chat box also sir uh, i think right. they are also want to be the part of the can see no? in the chat box Something yeah, like yeah, that. you can see, uh, and I think Rajesh sir can also see the chat box, and if they want, uh, if he uh, if he want, he, uh, he can add the numbers as well. Okay. okay. So it's totally up to you. Uh, uh, you want to add uh, some extra numbers, so uh, they are the, the chat box. Yeah, I think it is all up something. Did you? Yeah, it's hey, just just a minute, just okay, okay. Just I'm trying to add it. Video pause here. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. 
Already said, I mean, Our video is uh, showing you. Sir, your video is visible, sir. Okay. You can see that. Yes, sir. But I, I think there is no voice in the video, sir. Sir, can you verbally tell us what is going on because uh, there is no sound? Just Nitin, because now video is now over condition, after the clear, okay, sir. you check everything. Okay, sir. Very small video. Okay, sir. Yes, this is a small videos around the three minutes of videos. It show the power of the IoT device. Panel is traditional panel. Already we are installed in several building, but the yeah, but the power is the IoT. What is the IoT behind the thing? The IoT is the basically the internet of thing. This connect the different platform using the internet IP and uh, the technology behind of the this product is the they all are the server based. Panel work as a client and server is the uh, already communicated with the each of the client and all are the DSCP based. It means no need of any IP setting, in no need of any firewall setting, and your early device give the all the information whether you monitor or not. 
all the activity on the mobile app as well as the PC system. And uh, you know what is the early risk in case of you ignore the early warning system response. Each and every people know what happening after the ignoring of the notification and after the ignoring of the alarm system. And today we are giving the one of the practical demonstration, which is the Raspberry Pi is the full fledged IoT device. And uh, I give the some numbers or uh, basically this product having the no physical telephone line and no physical any GSM modem. You know, in case of you make any phone call, you need a PSTN line, public switch telephone landline. Otherwise, you need a GSM SIM. But in this requirement, we no need of any SIM and landline. All are of the API based. And our server is in USA. You receive a call from USA, not in India. And you, you feel what is the delivery time? Delivery time is the so fast than our our exchange telephone exchange. So I just give the demonstration after a few seconds. Okay, just we are enable the system. Yes, sir. Yeah. So till then, I think uh, I will give you a brief idea about what is early warning system and what is IoT. So United Nations Office of Disaster Risk Reduction defines early warning system as an integrated system of hazard monitoring, forecasting and prediction, disaster risk assessment, communication and preparedness activity system and processes that enables individual communities, government businesses and others to take timely actions to reduce disaster and disaster risk in advance of hazardous events. So this is the definition of early warning system according to the United Nations Office of Disaster Risk Reduction. And if we talk about what is IoT in the simplest form, we can say that it is a system uh, which is kind of early warning system that is used to control the risk and efforts of environmental disasters. It adds in the prevention of fatalities as well as economic and material consequences of disasters. It can prevent natural uh, natural disaster as well from occurring and also local communities to offset the risk by providing them timely updates on potentially dangerous threats. So this is the basic idea about what is early warning system and what is IoT and how we can combine uh, how IoT can uh, uh, be used in the early warning system and it can help uh, uh, from various disasters or uh, any kind of threat for population. Hmm. I think communication is not there. Just give a call. Uh, uh, okay, sir. Uh, should I call him? Yeah, okay, let me call. You continue. Okay, okay. Okay. So the relevance of early warning system has been recognized by the disaster management communities and is mentioned explicit, uh, explicitly in the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction 2015 to 30 in priority four. It says enhancing disaster preparedness for effective re response and to build back better in recovery, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. Effective end to end and people centered early warning system may include four interrelated key elements. First is disaster risk knowledge based upon the systematic collection of data and disaster risk assessment. The second is detection, monitoring, analysis, and forecasting of the hazards and possible consequences. Third is dissemination and communication by an official source of authority, timely, accurate, and uh, actionable warnings and associated information on livelihood and impact. And last, fourth is the preparedness at all levels to respond to the warning received. 
these four interrelated components need to be coordinated within the across sectors and multiple levels for the system to work effectively and to include a feedback mechanism for continuous improvement. Failure in one component or lack of coordination across them could lead to the failure of whole system. So that is the general idea about IoT and the early warning system. I hope now we can contact the Rajasthan. Join the mobile number and also configure the one. I think he is configuring the new mobile numbers uh, provided by the well, participants. Sir, no? So uh, we should be a little uh, more mm. patient. So, so, no, we mobile number because they are preparing yeah. uh, is a database for the new numbers, the then they will be uh, number two they will demonstrate. So the main major. Then I'll speak. Mr. Sharma, I think he's, he's taking time for uh, configuring this. Configuring, uh, yes. Okay, uh, let me numbers. let me start in between when he comes. And yes. Uh, yes, sir. He can. So, uh, so uh, yeah. Uh, I'm in a session. Please call me after one hour. Okay. Okay. So, uh, in between that, uh, Mr. Sharma comes up with uh, configuration of the mobile number. Let me continue with this. Uh, that about. Uh, IoT is has become very famous and ICT, it was a traditionally we used to use information communication uh, technologies or communication technology. Information, especially disaster related information, it may be early warning, it may be post disaster, it may be during disaster. So ICT was traditionally known to us, but with IoT, Internet of Things has uh, overpowered uh, on this, uh, that how to make early warning communication to the people, not only that early warning, here I'm going to mention about what IoT device cannot do or what are the uh, what are the things that we are missing in terms of some definition. So uh, when we see that uh, last year, February 7th, uh, this happened in Chamoli and we could, no we could not have any kind of uh, IoT system or communication system at the work site in Chamoli, where more than 200 uh, workers uh, missing and dead. And it is still uh, our organizations as well as uh, in the country now, uh, vigorous effort is going on to establish communication in our construction site and many other places. So that before event happens, at least we come to know. In this case also more than one hour, the debris traveled almost uh, 22 kilometer in that uh, hilly terrains. And when it uh, came all the debris at the work site, then, then suddenly things happen, but there was no such system in place, but now effort is going on to establish that system. So what is IoT in that case? IoT needs a uh, sensor or device, the network. So I'll speak about some of the network also. And then uh, the platform on which that it is to be integrated and then application. What are those applications? Some examples also I'm going to show. And finally, that what we look at the world of IoT is that in our mobile or in our uh, digital devices, dashboard, laptop, everywhere, entire world, uh, we need, we want the connections which are many way or others we are already connected, but specific about disaster management, not only early warning, but also post-disaster, uh, we have to see some of those priorities uh, through this. Uh, if you see India Mart, uh, and then in our market, you will see thousands of such uh, devices which are available. You see 3,500 per piece, Wi-Fi intruder alarm bell, many of the household 
uh, that we are keeping such kind of devices where the photo, uh, whoever comes, intruder or anyone coming in the or as a doorbell substitute with that conventional doorbell by this kind of devices. So 3,500, 2,000 or sometimes maybe in less than 1,000 rupees also things are made available. You can see a host of such things. And most important one that we know in our uh, water alarm bell, uh, we keep sometimes such kind of devices also. But most of the time after a year or two, they do not work because of uh, maintenance and other issues. So we are very much aware but uh, of course, the Internet of Thing it has been transforming our way of life, the home, office, city streets, and beyond. IoT product uh, gives us greater control over door locks, lights, and appliances. And if you visit some of the shop or uh, even LED light or uh, electrical uh, shops that you can see many of these devices are now available. And they offer insight into our resource consumption habits, habits, streamline business process, and better connect us to the people, system, environments that shape our daily lives. So let us see that what uh, I'm going to discuss about these things, definition of early warning and how early is the early warning. So those kind of pros and cons that um, we are going to explain and then application of IoT, especially in case of COVID, and even many, uh, air quality index and many other things that how they are being monitoring taking place. And then some of the practical example of uh, rainfall mapping or flood, then there are certain technology, of course, Rajesh ji is going to show the application of those technology, but I will give only definition only, what are the gateway and LoRa based technology and their application that which are already there, some of the glimpses of those things I'm going to show in shopping mall and in some hotels or in some of the streets in Chennai. And then if time permits, then I'll show some of the infrastructure monitoring uh, that which are being uh, mon uh, monitoring being done by IoT devices. Some example only, just only photographs. But I will emphasize more on the earthquake based early warning system. As I said that how early is the early warning? So here you can see that how early is the early warning? That can be seen that it may be from few seconds like earthquake to few months like drought. So this is taken from some of the literature, plenty of literature available. And uh, if you see that in disaster management, we are tornado, tsunami, or tornado means uh, here we call it cyclone, volcanic activity, then landslides, avalanche, flood, generally a few hours it takes then forest fires from few seconds to few hours or days, even months it goes on, forest fire. Uh, nuclear failure it is very sudden or dam failure also few minutes or few seconds. So you can see that speed of hazard onset according to hazard typology, which is given over here, uh, that early warning system is originally defined uh, by FEMIN early warning system. In the, before 1980s, we are familiar with uh, that is flood or FEMIN, uh, not FEMIN, rather drought and other things. Uh, in fact, early warning system or the definition and all this thing came up after 1980s only. And these were, uh, so, so you can see from few seconds to months that what are the category of disaster. So how early is the early warning system that depends on which type of hazard that we are looking at, not only the hazard, but also these are all, uh, you know, this is, this can be taken as a man-made, dam failure may be taken as technological. So various categories of disasters are there and byproducts of such disasters are also there. So only uh, that hazard type, earthquake is a hazard and cyclone or tornado here or say typhoon, all these things are th based on that, that what kind of methodology, what kind of system uh, that we have to place in, I, I will also try to give some of those scenario. And then again, uh, that uh, how early you can estimate for uh, earthquake, we have to catch the earthquake within few seconds, two, three seconds. That is the kind of instrumentation that we have to do in. 
So early warning systems are the set of capacities needed to generate and disseminate timely and meaningful warning information to enable individuals, communities, organizations threatened by a hazard. This is a UN, of course, now it is UNDRR, uh, which will be sufficient time to reduce the possibility of harm or loss. So there are many such uh, diagrams are available, just as a thought that event triggering hazards, immediate or critical causes, vulnerability and exposure, and then ultimately for the society. So time needed for early warning is uh, depending on articulated system. It depends on that uh, types of events that are happening over here. So uh, in our Sendai framework, which is ongoing now in the midway, it has not considered adequately about the casualty of disaster, which pose a significant change, particularly for the importance of disaster risk knowledge even though through IoT, we say that, yes, in IoT, we are detecting many things, but real action at the site, at the event that where it is going on, that needs a lot of, lot of other uh, disaster knowledge and disaster risk knowledge and other things, and their interpretation and action in terms of organizational responses to disaster. So this aspect is yet to be integrated in the Sendai framework. Maybe uh, in, in the time to come, now we have to bring these IoT devices. Of course, when this was framed in 2015 at that time, IoT devices or early warning uh, integration and these devices that which uh, are available in the market and smart uh, system that we have developed and machine to man, man to machine, machine to machine communication with the addition of uh, artificial intelligence, big data, and now a lot of integrations are taking place then interpretations depends on experience, personal feelings and values, cultural beliefs and interpersonal societal dynamics. These are not taken into consideration for the development of early warning system. So this is something that what has not been taken into the current ongoing Sendai framework, uh, that these are the some of the current understanding uh, that taken from some of the research publication that these, uh, in order to integrate experience, personal feelings, emotions, and values along with cultural, uh, cultural beliefs and interpersonal and societal dynamics, uh, which are to be integrated, then only early warning system uh, would be really uh, meaningful to the society that we are talking about. So uh, the timely, accurate, an unambiguous and credible warning has to be given. And then in that case, if we take only the cases of uh, like, uh, like in, in during COVID period, using the cloud platform, using Wi-Fi modem and smart mobile phone, Wi-Fi or GPRS, mobile apps, fitness, alerts, all these things are given. So handheld mobile devices uh, using that, uh, how separation uh, exercise or separation means uh, uh, that having COVID, not having COVID, that has been, we have been able to identify using this kind of devices. So Internet of Things, uh, now we are connecting with all these things, whether it is laptop, desktop, or intelligent CCTV camera and all these things are there, or even the lighting or car, Freezer, everything we are able to connect to Internet of Things. Any such smart device, integrated manufacturing, or even drone surveillance or drone based inventories, all these things are taken. And we are now becoming more and more familiar with such kind of uh, smart applications in our day to day life. And then even some of the uh, devices which uh, uh, which is going to be demonstrated uh, soon yes ready okay so in between i stop and uh, now i'll continue after the demonstration let me stop over here
Mr. Rajesh Sharma is ready for, uh, he has adapted all those mobile number given by our participants, including ours, into the response system. So that is why we took some time to integrate them. Uh, welcome. Yes. I give the console. This is a uh, Raspberry Pi control. And during the addition of the number, during the addition of numbers, some error is gone on. Just why I take some time. Now, Matt, now activate this system. Okay. All are check your mobile number. And SMS also. Or all call from the US, not from India. And we are not in yes, any SIM. I am receiving the call. Yeah, yeah. I can. Emergency alert from Desh. Fire brigade ko phone kare. So this was the message on my phone. And it is the very fast uh, development application. Within an hour, you can design, you can customize any product. And this is for our new in, uh, new engineering graduates as well as a startup person. It's uh, having a lot of technology. Because uh, due to limitation, we fit uh, around the 10 numbers. Uh, can it show that this is Patna uh, mein jo aag lagi hai, uska location along with uh, integrated uh, with location? We, abhi location we have sent you. Abhi to main aapko message de raha hu. Kyunki okay. thora sa software ka part hai. Abhi maine message diya hai, hai na? Kyunki isme hum jo bhi geographical location feed kar denge, wo aapko SMS aa jayega. Okay. Jis building mein humne isko ka interface karna hai. We have a geographical location, and you will have an immediate SMS. And this is not a simply voice. This is not a simply voice. It's, the, it's a speech to text to speech converter. Whatever we written in language, like Hindi, Uriya, Telugu, Tamil, Punjabi, whatever your language, international language you use, Simply any designer can communicate the regional language also. Okay. In case of any question? Huh? No, carry on, carry on. Any yes. language can be integrated. So yeah, yeah. Any language, any voice. Designer can generate Telugu, Tamil, Punjabi, Uriya, whatever our traditional language language. Because during the voice, it's also called a silence alarm. Not a panic alarm, it's a silence alarm. Every person, concerned person receive on the mail. Also, phone, mail, SMS also. Or no need of any registered telephone number required. All the call from the US. Okay. Just I feed the location. And you check also. Uh, sir, can you tell me why these calls are originated from the US? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, this is this is the API, and you uh, number of the world IT player making the API. We are using the Trello account. T W I double L O Trello. You can create own API, own voice message, any language. Hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, first of all, the benefit of this uh, system, it gives a simultaneously call the all people. But in case of we are taking a normal uh, uh, mobile phone or our mobile one by one, like we are making 100 number of people a phone call to the last period of the 10, 100 people is the, after the 10 minutes, you have maybe half an hour. But this system simultaneously have you created all the person? 
So can you uh, create one such, uh, say, live event at your place where you are there, which can be sent? Yeah, yeah, just, 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 I said it, just. You give me some time, just I clear. Uh, sir, also, I want to know whether SMS can be, uh, will also be received or it is only yeah, a call? SMS, SMS also customized, whatever you need SMS, okay. customize it. Because for this particular event, we have only received the call, but not the message. So it, it is, is it optional or? Because maybe, maybe I not able to put your uh, SMS list because due to the, because the, we receive a number, I think around uh, 12 o'clock. That time mm -hmm. not, I have not much a time. Okay. Okay. But this is a simple product presentation. So there is a question from participant that how many phone numbers can be uh, number of e irrespective e irrespective of okay. a requirement e because all the system based. Okay. Okay. So there is no defined numbers. We can add n numbers of numbers. N uh, numbers. And they can receive the call or message. Uh, in the same time, not one by same one. time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. I have another solution, but the limitation of this solution, he makes a call one by one. This is suitable for the five to ten people, not for the hundred people, thousand people. Yes, sir. And easy to customize. Okay. I give the another. Just within a, yes, just I saw I like console, it. how I change. It is programming based software. Yeah, yeah, all of the uh, add all the numbers the Python. Python. Okay. Python based software. Okay. Okay. And is it one Naveed way communication Singh. or both way communication? Navdeep Singh पूछ रहे हैं कि सर कितने Navdeep Singh का मैसेज आया है कि सर कितने लोगों को मैसेज और कॉल जाएगी एक टाइम में Navdeep हम एक साथ जितने भी चाहे उतने लोगों को मैसेज भेज सकते हैं और एक ही साथ सबको मैसेज और कॉल जा सकती है इसके थ्रू एंड इज इट ओनली लाइक इन दिस केस अनदर क्वेरी मे बी दैट इज इट ओनली दैट मोबाइल नंबर और इट कैन गो टू इवन लैंडलाइन और एनी अदर Form of coming out through internet, through email, also. No, no, any, any, any communication because the simply I configure the Google location where yeah. I seated. I am yeah. seated in ITO, our institutional engineer's office. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the same call from. Uh, Sharma sir's office. Yeah. Uh, it is here. Fire panel say emergency alert Sunday. Fire brigade ko phone kare hai. This is my location. I'm not going to go to the Fire panel say emergency alert Sunday. Fire brigade ko phone kare hai. FBI ki mukhya saath. Fire yes, panel say emergency alert Sunday. The benefits of this system. Totally software defined, no hardware, no hardware requirement. You can customize, you can develop, also make on WhatsApp call also. Okay. Uh, uh, Rajesh ji, Isme, yes, I wanted that because now location is defined at your office at uh, yeah, yeah. Institute of Engineers. So yeah. can you uh, can you put a matchbox or some kind of fire into the sensor, nearby sensor, so that we yeah, can yeah. see in vividly from here? Now announcement is there. Announcement scale sir. I want because, that this will be auto generated from yeah, your yeah. office if you fire something by lighting something. Yeah, yeah. You can do it because this is the just communication system. Uh -huh. This system we integrate with the building fire alarm system 
and yeah. give the location of the building alarm system. Okay. I have another solution during the transit condition, like your koi bari si container ja raha, uske andar bhi hum isko laga sakte hain. Us samay hume iske andar GPS lagani padegi. Using GPS okay. we can retrieve the location. Okay. So ye devices, aapke paas ab ye computer and console and programming hai. No, no, but computer only for the programming purpose. This is the standalone device. This is a simple standalone device. So only uh, computer so, used for the configuration. When you configure, no, it's it's a it's a credit card size system. Yeah. And the price is not more than five thousand. Only five thousand. <laughs> okay. So. तो उसमें सेंसर भी होगा फायर अलार्म सेंसर का कुछ है उस डिवाइस में सर फायर अलार्म सेंसर इससे एक्टिवेट हो जाएगा हम फायर अलार्म okay. सिस्टम किससे कनेक्ट कर देंगे ओके तो बट आई वांट दैट इफ यू मेक फायर ऑफ कोर्स इट इज नॉट सजेस्टेड बट इफ यू मेक फायर वेयर यू आर सिटिंग देयर एंड पुट द सेंसर नियर बाय लेट इट डिटेक्ट नो प्रॉब्लम आई अगेन आई रिटर्न टू द ओरिजिनल वीडियो in case okay. of you concentrate all the first video you see uh, panel having the one of the console is now name as the auto dialer okay. auto dialer having in case of the falam trigger simply dialing like this okay. this system fitted in this panel if you request okay. if you permit me i again repeat the video oh video okay, so. was not seen your yeah. video yeah yeah because video having the all the flame sensor a smoke detector mallow call point router control panel there because the sensor is connected with the fire alarm control panel and fire alarm control panel trigger the this uh, communication system okay aapne video jo chalaya hai lagta hai humne dekha nahi sir main dobara isliye keh raha hu dobara main dikha deta hu sir ha dobara dikhata hu wo share full screen kare share jab karenge you do the full screen then we can see whatever you display so there is a question regarding the application whether it is available for everyone or what what is the application actually which is being used just a minute just a minute नहीं ये तो ये तो ऑफ कोर्स नॉट लेजिबल आप देखो पूरा वीडियो देखो सर ओके दीज आर द सेंसर्स आई थिंक हाँ हाँ ओ उसमें आवाज नहीं आ रहा है क्योंकि that is why we thought that okay. it's a two way communication okay panel yeah. give the app and yeah, all are the or irrespective of geographical condition okay ye jo fire detector sensor hai uske samne pura live fire dikhai to maza aa jayega ji sir ye jo aapka detector hai ha ha iska detector kya detect kar raha hai participants are not able to lively able to see but if you yeah. can put something on fire nearby the detector and yeah, yeah. let the I, let it you so i just silent. stop after this ah yeah theek hai
ठीक है ओ आवाज सुनाई देगा आपके जो जी सर ओके देयर वाज अ फायर एंड देन द मैसेज हैज गोन टू एवरीवन या या फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल डिटेक्ट अ फायर एंड आई गिव द वन ऑफ द नेटवर्क कार्ड द वेरी स्मॉल लाइक साइज ऑफ द मैचेस बॉक्स देयर आर नेटवर्क कार्ड दिखाना सो दैट स्मॉल इंटेंसिटी ऑफ फायर विल नॉट मैटर इन दिस कने आई मीन बिकॉज़ मैम एवरी सेंसर रिक्वायर्ड अ पावर ओके and the power provided by the control panel because the panel is in the part of building and sensor is the different part of building at the different distance in case of high rise building okay. number of sensor install using the wired may be wireless and the panel having the central command room this okay. is the this is the net size of the network card which inst- which fit in the panel yeah yeah This is the Wi-Fi spot. Hmm. The matches box size. This yeah. is the power of IoT. It hmm. connect to the building Wi-Fi, maybe LAN. We connect the building LAN. Hot spot. Okay. Or you, this panel may uh, become as a global communication. Okay. Just I complete this video. ठीक है and this video give the comfort complete the two way communication with iot device receive data from the control panel and control your mobile your computer your desktop from system also so you you take a lot of you save a lot of time in case of you are in rest mode and your fire alarm system get activated you simply receive on the mobile app and also you control and command immediate you concern the concerned fire officers and maybe security guard whatever available in building and evacuate the building timely so my one question is that message yeah. is going automatically or some operator has to release the message no madam no no operator within the system no any operators it is the system generator and the api license by the we are purchasing the, from the various license provider okay. all at the real time so you are having some integration with uh, our like mobile uh, operators like airtel jio because because this demo successfully while for the us uh, us partner not provided by the indian partner india having the lot of restriction especially in voice calling in india no free of voice calling when you register sub application no application permitted in the india is that's why all the call from the us not in india okay so is it legally uh, permissible legally 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 like we call plus 1800 free call and everything yeah, yeah. it's a legal telephone regulatory authority regulation because because uh, if you go in mass scale how many sim and how many ids and how many aadhar card how many you create single accounts uh, can handle thousand of mobile number and sms single account okay so the mobile phone uh, mobile call that we have received uh, just yes. now uh, it can it, it, this is all uh, whatever has been done still uh, country has not even you have been working with the defense drdo also so for that you have made a separate uh, 
communication you can you can we can customize because the we can customize as per our requirement we can at present now we are not talking with any airtel and idea people but we can take in case of mass requirement and requirement by the any government agency okay so you have been doing no this things for government yeah agencies. i am already doing so in that case just now like i my mobile is with uh, airtel and i received the call through usa directly yeah. as an a, a call yeah. or sms and location yeah. all communication i can do but suppose if we uh, invite you to have install these things in our campus here where we are yeah, sitting yeah. now yeah. so in that case here we are having our all individual more than 100 employees are here yeah. we are having our mobile uh, of different different subscriber are there so yeah. in that case uh, what is, uh, what will you do we don't want to receive because, because the, all are the mobile number is a part of our software coding no okay. because software is in our scope software run in our system not their system yeah yeah all the number we are feeding in this sd card all the number in this sd card and this sd card in in my custody not any us custody okay so if it is not there then suppose we are giving you uh, this contract or something for making a such kind of integrated communication system Yeah. SMS uh, warning system for our campus itself, like yeah. uh, NIDM campus here in Rohini. So in that case, each of the employees are having uh, now different subscriber. So in that case, uh, what, how you will no problem, operate? No problem. I, either number, I have no idea about which you provide the, all the five, five to ten number, which which service provider. I don't know. Yeah. You put only the country code and your mobile number. Nothing else. Okay. I saw it. Just you check. But how I provide the number? Because your request is the totally live. That's why he make it totally live. Okay. Hmm. And this is your mobile number. All yeah. of the mobile number is sequence. So okay. Simply, I put the mobile number and system one by one take and make a communication. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Fire. Thank you. One fire alarm is a little bit. Me, eh? थोड़ी इंटेंसिटी पे सेट किया हुआ है तो माचिस को डेमोस्ट्रेशन पर्पज के लिए ऐसा दिखाया गया नहीं मैडम ये स्ट्रक्चरल डेंसिटी सेंस करता है If participants have any question, they can ask in the chat box. Uh, otherwise, we can uh, move further. Can... Somebody has raised the hand. We can allow that person to speak. Ah, uh, of course. If somebody has raised the hand, yeah. then we can. Yeah, Swendu Kumar. Yeah, ah, uh, Swendu Das. Ah, uh, okay. You have to unmute him if he wants to speak. Ah yeah, yeah, Subindu. Ah uh, uh, okay. Or Das, you can, can unmute, unmute and you can yeah, directly yeah. ask the question. Yeah. Ah, uh, you can unmute yourself, Subindu. Ah, uh, Subindu, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. If you have any questions. I think so. Huh? Subendu Kumar Das, if you have any question, you can unmute yourself and ask. Hmm. Probably. Yeah. Maybe by mistake. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. No issues. Thank you very much, sir, for practically showing us how IT senses the phenomena and sends the early warning 
messages to all the participants or uh, members or uh, which numbers are available or set in the database thank you very okay. much sir yeah, next time i think i uh, we shall invite you uh, officially to our campus along with all those yeah, yeah, sir. <laughs> definitely and then we'll see the live first, and physically first you and your team uh, i invite to you to check the our setup what we oh, what yeah. are we are designing what are we are making yeah yeah okay sir, sir on behalf of nidm i want to uh, i want to share you a small token of thanks from our side uh, which will be shared with you on your mail thank you very much sir for <laughs> joining us okay okay thank you any main to sir ye chahunga ki jaise jitni badi building hoti hai uska apna ek budget hota hai fire safety ka jo budget hota hai ya early warning system ka jo budget hota hai उसके अंदर ये सब सिस्टम के सर कोई कॉस्ट नहीं होती है नो कॉस्ट अगर एक हाइड्रेंट अगर एक स्मोक डिटेक्टर देखा जाए उसकी कॉस्ट में इसकी कोई कॉस्ट नहीं होती बट लेक ऑफ नेग्लिजेंस ही हमारे ये सबसे बड़ी समस्या है सिस्टम इज देयर ऑलवेज सर दो क्वेश्चन आए हुए हैं चैट बॉक्स में पहला है कि इन 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 सेंसर्स की या इन आईओटी डिवाइसेस की लिमिटेशन क्या है मतलब इनका मतलब सर, इसकी जो सबसे सबसे बड़ी लिमिटेशन है नेटवर्क्स इफ नो नेटवर्क्स नो लाइफ ओके नेटवर्क इज इंपॉर्टेंट नेटवर्क एंड पावर बिना पावर का सर कुछ नहीं हो सकता and the second question is how many devices matlab how many devices is needed in one residential house ek ghar ke liye kitni devices lagengi sir kya hota hai jitne bhi devices hote hain wo specific purpose ke liye hote hain yes sir har ghar ki apne requirement hai ab smoke ki baat kare hum smoke detectors bhi lagate hain hum heat detectors bhi lagate hain hum multi sensor bhi lagate hain aapne flame sensor bhi dekh liya ग्लास ब्रेक भी देख लिया एक एल केबल भी होता है एलपीजी सेंसर भी होता है मतलब नंबर ऑफ सेंसर एज पर योर एज पर योर फायर लोड व्हाट इज द पोटेंशियल फायर लोड यस सर ओके ठीक है थैंक यू सर and in fact just one question not question query itself when we visit in your place then it will be more clear but one thing is like yeah. in a residential area in uh, yeah. the question that being asked in the residential area every household is having different wifi network definitely like yeah. sct and other things so in yeah, that yeah, case yeah. Yeah. while you integrate or put iot devices in a residential campus uh, gated colonies yeah, then yeah. you need to feed all those uh, wifi devices network the different companies that providing yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that communication uh, becomes seamless both the communication no no problem because the bits because just i give the one information about the wifi okay. every home having the specific ip address and uh, okay. number of devices all the number of devices work as a client in case of you reach in your home you have a yeah. four, four mobile phone if every mobile phone having the same ip if you check yeah. the ip address yeah. but every device having the own uh, own client address like 192168 some dot 00 and all yeah. are the dhcp based dhcp based means it is independent to your setting when you connect using the user id and password of your home network your office network automatic dhcp settle the your the network communication okay how about uh, about those kind of nokia devices which were just uh, basic devices about sms like these are smart communication we are talking yeah yeah smart all are smart uh, but uh, other than non smart phone those those yeah, yeah, basic yeah. you can I, I, sms to them. i i saw the i saw the uh, another this is the non smart this is the sim based but it's have also dumping the google location okay and it's take the tower address not a, because it's having the no gps it's take a tower address where he receive the signal okay and tower address you know not more than your resident 100 to 10 meter maybe 100 meter maybe 200 meter maybe 
300 meter. That's why it's not give the correct location, but it's get the nearby location. Okay. And no need of a, a, a smart feature. No need of Wi-Fi. So simply, uh, basically, 50 rupees recharge SIM is sufficient for this. In okay. one charge the 49 rupees. You put the all the safety and requirement in this system. Okay. But totally where you based on the mobile phone service provider. Yeah, yeah. And also you may be knowing from your system that yeah. right now how many before just sending automatic SMS or communication about the early warning through IoT devices yeah, yeah. or even basic phone, you might be knowing in your console that how many uh, uh, how many uh, people are going to receive this SMS, which you Sir, have in your chart? Yes, your very good question. All the SMS, all the voice call in your record. When you yeah. purchase a license, you your server having the, all the information. Which call is the established? Which call is not picked by user? Which call is not received by user? Okay. Which call is That's a call? Right. You have all the thing. Okay. You so, can generate report also. Okay. Okay. Very good. So we'll have more uh, such uh, things in uh, very uh, near future. Thank you very much, Ajitji. You are. Thank you, sir. It's the your initiative because <laughs> till till you first day you asking practical sensors. I give, just I told you earlier also, you give a you give a case study. I provide the solution. Yeah, yeah. and I have a I have a internship all also the program using the institution of engineers platform. I provide the number of student, number of AMI graduates, number of engineers to encourage the to adopt the IoT solution. Okay. Okay. Take care. Take care. We'll take advantage of that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank sir. you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us and sharing your detailed information about uh, how IoT functions and how we can receive the SMS or early warnings for different disasters. Thank you very much, sir. I hope we will uh, join uh, again yeah, in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, thank you. Uh, thank you. Sir. I think now we can resume the presentation, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now uh, you I can. can I can yes, resume sir. the presentation. Okay, yes, sir. Just maybe uh, Shalender is also here. After me, he is going to speak. No. Uh, Shalender, sir. Yes. Uh, after. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. has also a smart, uh, small presentation. Okay. Yes, sir. So let me quickly go through whatever I wanted to show. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, we are having uh, lots of such devices that which gives even air quality index and other things. Background is IoT devices. Uh, there are uh, several thousands are like one of the uh, participants are asking that how many uh, devices uh, required for residents. Rather, I would say that through such kind of devices, any number of devices can be connected. And there are some uh, other communication, LoRa based system, where even thousands of such devices can be connected at the same time. So, and also the devices control, this is someone uh, uh, showing that what is the PM1, PM2.5, PM10, and then what is the temperature, humidity, uh, then carbon dioxide in PPM or noise, even it is showing. So any number of, it is only depends on that how these are being customized into a control panel, including some kind of display here, the air quality index. When it is zero to 50, it is good. So your air quality index is showing 41. So this 41, when it is showing, then you know 
uh, it is showing that it is a good condition. And then total volatile uh, volatile uh, organic compound, PPM, uh, these are all uh, being shown. Even 35 is also more or less compound. So all these things can be shown as well as interpreted. Graphs can be shown and they can be integrated uh, to, to a display panel here at every houses, every location, wherever it is required and through this kind of IoT, uh, digital dashboard. This can be displayed in an office or in a, in a broad street. And similarly, such kind of devices uh, like traffic conditions, traffic maps, uh, some of them we can see, uh, but now with IoT devices that, uh, or even with uh, Google, uh, like in Google map, when we give the location, uh, then we can show that it shows us the optimized uh, time that it will take and which uh, where the traffic jam is there, how much time that it will take uh, to reach to the spot that I have given. So all these things can be or now in many of the cities that they display all those things at the important road junctions along with the along with now we are able to see conveniently the road network where which way that I'm going in our Google map individually in our car, GPS network or in the mobile uh, display. So it become uh, more individually, we, uh, it is being coming to each of the smart mobile phone. Similarly, when with the digital dashboard kind of things in a, in a important road junctions, those who are not having say smartphone or not, uh, uh, they want to be guided by complete display of the road that in which direction that uh, at, at a road junction that he wants to go, uh, then that can be seen at the important junctions where road signs are there. So digital dashboard can be shown along with the Google map or similar kind of indications about the road network, uh, then which direction will go, they can decide. Individual driver can decide based on the mobile phone, that smartphone that having, or even dashboard that which can be displayed at the roadside or in, uh, while uh, on the road. So the concern is, in fact, everything is IoT, we are becoming smart and smarter and it is all fine. But current definition, architecture and function of early warning systems have tended towards technological responses. You have seen some of the technological response in the demonstration just before this, that have little relation to the social context of their application. And that may be the reason that we have been having even many participants, you are asking many questions also. A lot of things could not be explained online. So, but we have to see that more little, uh, relation to the social context of their application. like. When you see that, yes, in one place, when it is announcing that in SBI uh, in Patna, that uh, fire is there. So what is that condition over there? Whether fire alarm system has been integrated with the, uh, with the fire system and allied system, allied other networks, police, ambulance, and also uh, uh, the current day, what is the current temperature and uh, whether road network is uh, all right or not, whether it, there are some kind of traffic jam are there or not. So giving only information through SMS or even giving a geolocation in the mobile phone, which have been uh, put in during question answer that we are talking about, it is also required that what time that it has, time also will display, but which road, through which road that fire brigade, for example, can reach to that spot. And now, then we have to go into, in that SBI, you know, State Bank of India, uh, that which portion, uh, uh, it is fire is there, but how long it is going on? Which portion of the SBI, whether it is first floor, second floor, then which location, whether it is in the strong room or vault that where uh, notes are being kept there, uh, uh, say currency notes, whether it is there or not, so there are many other contexts uh, have to come in uh, to integrate with the technology. So that part concern, not the concern, I would say, it, it is giving us an open challenge to contextualize the early warning while using IoT or many other sensors. And earlier also, uh, we have said that it, 
experience, personal experience, location, ethnic, uh, ethnicity, and then heritage or uh, some kind of culture, ethics, time, so many things have to be integrated. So from dominate, uh, from the dominance of technology uh, and response, we must move through phases of disaster research to transdisciplinary integration and policy contribution. So this is where that we have to move one, two, three step forward in order to make IoT. Because more than two decades before, the humanoid robot uh, came up into the market, especially in Japan, ASIMO, if you see. So in order to, it is humanoid robot, robot that when came up, then it was a concern at that time that how human beings are going to adapt with that uh, uh, greetings of, uh, adapt with the robot, uh, humanoid robot, you can say. It is shaking hand now, it can, it can do many other things, it can smell, it can sense about many sensory uh, things are also given there, it can greet. So many, in many places in our industry or even in the locality or even in offices or in museum, in many, many varied application of this uh, humanoid robot are being used along with many other uh, technologies. So uh, again, this was shown earlier, early warning for disaster, uh, like when it is a long-term climate prediction, like solar cycle every 11, 12 years, then it needs a, ten, a decade that uh, the, the range is about a decade. Then uh, when we see uh, that long range weather forecasting, then medium range weather forecasting, short term weather forecasting, and now casting it is within. And then what are their extend? What are their extend? You see it is given here. The, the dust and other things, especially about the early warning for disaster, where it is taken the meteorological origin, then again, there are many subcategories are there. Earlier, I have shown various other types of disaster that how early is the early warning is to be given. So uh, then wireless sensors, network, cloud solution, machine learning, and other components of the internet of things should be used when deploying early warning system or integrated into already existing ones. So here, the thing is the concern through various phases of disaster risk reduction or research and transdisciplinary integration and policy contribution, this aspect uh, is being taken up or is to be taken up uh, by internet of things uh, where deploying uh, they are wireless sensors, cloud solution, machine learning, then big data and so many things are there. Uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, so many things have to be integrated with the other components of IoT. And in fact, internet of things, a lot of research has been uh, going on. So if you see that, what are the upcoming things which are written? IoT connectivity management, smart infrastructure, which are upcoming uh, say development and uh, where a lot of innovations are going on. Then even uh, the things that microgrid technology, cellular M2N, uh, machine to machine, IoT transportation, internet of things, all these things have been tried and these are being used. Even in our smart homes and IoT in healthcare, IoT in manufacturing, then uh, IoT managed services, connected logistics. This is just to say that what are uh, like the, uh, how many devices are there? What are the area that where smart sensors are being used? So here are some of the tidbits of those application. And then whether it is uh, 5G is coming up. And of course, many other countries, they have introduced 5G in our country also by this year end maybe we are going to have 5G also. Many of the 5G markets is spreading like anything. So uh, now, as just in continuation to that thing, whether it is 3D printing, whether it is artificial intelligence, whether it is big data, whether blockchain, then connectivity, all these things are being integrated with IoT. These are the 12 mega trends which are listed over here. And in fact, along with this, uh, the LoRa, uh, 
low range uh, Wi-Fi in between uh, Wi-Fi, which can make with the 3G, 4G, 5G internet. And these are the radio communication. And then through the gateways, kilometers, uh, the devices are lying kilometer where it doesn't need any kind of uh, say uh, GSM seams or anything. The radio-based communication where digital health, smart home and offices all are being connected through gateways and by LoRa-based technology. And then it goes to the, uh, through the Wi-Fi in mobile, it can be, uh, both a communication is possible. And then of course, domain of LoRa is uh, now being highlighted. So, and then some of the sensors, carbon dioxide sensors, monitoring sensors, panic button, and then carbon dioxide signal, uh, threshold limits are also defined if it is at 8 ppm, these are all programmed and for the devices have been made, like this is CO2. Uh, so CO2, it will tell that it will show red when say whatever threshold that it is being defined and it will have a buzzer sounds for five seconds. So when it is red, then it will have a buzzer sound. So these are having now application in school classroom, office and conference, hospitals, villas or apartment, shopping malls, court rooms, banks, hotels, cinema, uh, wherever you want, this can be uh, uh, deployed and then it can be taken. Like real-time sensor measurement, automatic LED alerts on threshold limits, configurable measurement interval, regular heartbeat at a configurable interval, secure data transmission. So these are various application area and features that IoT devices are uh, being developed now. So uh, it's again, same thing. And then one can use this as a uh, panic button. This needs only one battery whose life is more than five years or even 10 years. So it doesn't have any other wear or anything. It is to be fixed on a door or on a room or wherever you want, outside also as applications have been shown in the previous slide, then uh, service call, something like in hotel room, receptions and other things can be seen. Air quality like carbon dioxide, socks, knobs, all these things. And smart COVID like carbon dioxide concentration has got some correlation, some research papers are there. So even during COVID period, this kind of sensors have been used that if carbon dioxide is going beyond say 1000 PPM, then it says that uh, and then COVID spread or COVID infection becomes prominent, such kind of research or data being taken. Okay, uh, then IoT solutions with LoRa, low power devices and low running and installation cost, and then network flexibility. So many, many, many things are there. Now, of course, uh, I would say that uh, if I take into some other application that where IoT system has not yet uh, been used like uh, like in my locality uh, if it is raining then we want to see yeah, our yeah. smart yeah, devices yeah. to tell me that if i go for office say at a time which is being shown here with this diagram uh, that uh, in like it is the case of new york new york uh, map is given over there and it is showing over there that heavy rain 23 minutes from home starts at 10.04 a.m. and it will last for 33 minutes. So you see that that kind of, and rain is 9.5 kilometer away from work, tap to see how it moves. So these are all rain uh, shadows, that these are the map where heavy rainfall is there, where red is there. So it is giving in our location, wherever I'm having these smart devices, uh, it uh, it is being customized here you see rain viewer you can see app is available iphone ipad and all these things are there so it can give that before i start from my home towards office uh, where i when we set our uh, say mobile phone uh, with the with the map then whether it is, it is going to rain or not then it is giving this particular information to my mobile uh, from my location uh, say at home while going towards office, it is giving such kind of uh, customized information to the user to make it that uh, that how long it is going to rain, where rain is going to start, and how uh, and nearby area or where 
that rains are happening, all these things that we can be customized to see uh, in, in our mobile or even digital devices. So uh, in fact, these days, uh, it is more important that where it is raining and how much inundation is there. So here it is again showing that application of GIS information. If it is raining for 15 minutes in my locality, what will be the water or inundation or rainwater where it is going to accumulate the water? So here it shows that if it is raining, the color here, this one, is showing that 10.1 uh, millimeter inundation depth will be there at this location. And here it is hardly red colored area, it is hardly there will be any such. Right? So such kind of customization uh, would be more you know, flexibly and easily this can be done when we'll have more particular information using uh, say rain, rainwater, uh, rain gauge or even inundation gauges in our locality. So uh, even some of the things that uh, it is not that only information is enough, but what are the important quick fix that work that we can do? In this case, uh, quickly within few hours, uh, we can increase the capacity of carrying the flood water through a stream so that we can save this portion by raising this by sand and some kind of geo uh, geomat or geo uh, cell, these are called geo cell, which uh, water cannot penetrate through this because these are all uh, polymer, uh, but this can be made stable here by, by filling them with uh, the sand or whatever desert material available nearby. So we can have some kind of flood walls like this to save this locality by raising the embankment height quickly by this. So these are some of the measures to be taken or even by a flood wall uh, or boundary wall, which is made here to save this facility over here. So such devices are to be integrated as I was showing the concern and social connectivity or context and location that which wall here, which wall, this wall, not this one. So which side water is coming, simply saying that these people, whoever is uh, here, if they receive that you are going to be uh, inundated by flood water is coming, so they must know our system has to be integrated from which side, this side or this side. So these are to be contextualized while making a reliable early warning system. So uh, early warning application, uh, city work shopping mall in Delhi, and then in Chennai city, panic buttons are being used. And now these days, this kind of panic buttons are integrated with even intelligent camera also. So these are various application. Now let me uh, take it in case of earthquake that it may cause many things, building collapse, dam failure, train wreck, and other things. And so in that case, uh, I would uh, say that uh, what are the who decides the early warning, earthquake early warning? Like in our country, National Center for Seismology, they are the nodal agency. So in Japan, a large flash as banner headlines across the TV screen, computers deliver messages, uh, messages received via internet, cell, phone, uh, cell phones beep, and in the Tokyo subway and on other rail lines, monitors show the alert system. So one can see uh, such kind of alert system uh, that uh, even in Tokyo or in California, uh, but we have not yet made. So the kind of devices that in the uh, detecting earthquake as soon as it happens, uh, so we have to put such kind of devices in the ground. Otherwise earthquake cannot be sensed by air or by IoT devices placed in power or anything. So we have to have some kind of ground-based station so these are the things that provided uh, solid on a solid rock so that whenever ground is vibrated then it will record uh, through this seismometer the uh, intensity is so such kind of devices available for the last 100 plus years but now we have shifted to a digital system and then communication what kind of communication that we have to do uh, 
uh, that who will communicate with whom. Uh, uh, like the children are not having, say, smartphone in school, we have certain restriction. Then in that case, uh, how they are to be communicated. Receiving early warning now in a family member, if everybody receives that same kind of early warning or uh, some kind of telephone call that we have received during the demonstration in the previous session, then uh, then who will communicate and what kind, kind of action is to be taken, even in the family front or even in a school, there should be certain kind of protocol. This is where that IoT based system uh, is, of course, is okay, but how it is to be methodically uh, applied, uh, that needs uh, more integration with the, with, the, with the place as well as type of disaster or uh, warning that is given. So uh, such kind of thing, what is to be done, how it is to be done. And we have now shifted to digital seismograph this way. And then we can see the entire globe also like this manner. And where day, night, every time that earthquake, you can see every earthquake happening depending on its magnitude that how with time these waves are going along the surface and how these are being recorded. There are thousands of such seismometers are there which are recording and our globe, this uh, earth globe, is uh, how it is uh, being uh, experiencing that earthquake at different parts, which are being taken up. And in fact, they can be shown here uh, daily, weekly, monthly, uh, even uh, for the last one week, two weeks, and all these earthquakes, uh, these are being plotted automatically. So in that case, we can see that uh, daily, uh, that what are the seismic monitor that which are there or uh, location nearby our country also, uh, we can see that where these earthquakes are happening. And why earthquakes are happening? I'm not going into those details because plates are moving in this direction. If you see here uh, that our country also, this is the Himalaya, then India is uh, pushing that Eurasian plate uh, to the north side. So because of that, Himalayan range has been formed. So these are indicating that which are the places that where earthquakes are happening. And then accordingly seismometer placement and their data records are to be designed. So um, anyway, uh, I would like to now take you to some of the other things quickly. Like when earthquake happens, then waves comes, then we have we get different kind of response. So in that case, earthquake early warning uh, given to this locality will be different from given to this locality. So earth, if early warning system is placed over here only, that will not suffice to the people here. So ground condition, and then the source of the earthquake, and then the then what kind of response that same earthquake happened over here or landslide that happening over here or earthquake that happening, amplification, liquefaction that will happen. So uh, on the solid bedrock, how it is going to respond and in the river side, how it is going to respond. So then early warning uh, information has to be customized with the, with the location. Uh, then whether it is attenuation occurring and at the building site, and if so, if if a building is here, there will be vigorous response will be there. All these things have to be taken as a knowledge base into the early warning system. And these are all various kind of sensors. They are communic they uh, they communicate with each other, and accordingly that it is to be customized as wave P waves. And we expect that in our household, wherever TV or mobile or whatever system that we are having, uh, that we must know at what time that earthquake is happening. And if then my mobile device should show that strong shaking expected, which is from uh, this red colored secondary wave, shear wave is about to reach to the spot three where my current location is there by GPS. And it will take 28 seconds to reach to this spot from here to here. So now at many places, uh, these systems are now available, but for that, we need to deploy those ground-based stations, which are shown a few slides below. Otherwise, uh, 
this same thing can be transmitted uh, from California to India, we can see in our mobile, but we will not experience the uh, earthquake. Although IIT Ruki has developed earthquake early warning system, which is under operation in the campus, but it has to be deployed in the, across the country or earthquake prone area. Uh, before that, we have to have such kind of such kind of communication devices, such kind of devices, sensors, then alert center, and then building sensor, and then who are the community? These are the uh, alert sensors that which is to be deployed. Without deploying that, but now system is such that if earthquake is happening in Japan, at the same time, they are giving warning to the nearby location. At the same time, entire world body, we come to know about that earthquake happening in Japan. But in order to have same system in our country, we have to put those devices. So last part is infrastructure application where IoT devices are radio uh, frequency based devices are being there. So I'm not going into this detail. Uh, then uh, factory emergency control system, then building earthquake early warning system, and then bridge uh, real time control and monitoring system. And of course, uh, this part, uh, I'm not going to much details about the volcano where they are happening and how they are being connected. Early warning is very difficult. Volcanoes and thermal fields that have been active during the past 10,000 years only we know, even though Earth is uh, made more than 4.5 billion years ago. But with scientific data and other things, we have been able to uh, correlate uh, that whatever volcanoes happening 10,000 years only. Before that also they have been happening, but they have not yet been codified. So a uh, lot of details one can get about the volcano monitoring methods, even though we are not uh, facing any such volcano in our country as yet, but in, in Andaman Islands, yes, it is there, but we do not have any active volcano in and around us. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your detailed presentation on the topic of IoT and how it is imp uh, important for early warning system. In the Indian context, it is very important that because around more than half of India is very prone to the earthquake kind of disasters. Yeah, we are safe from volcanoes, but not from cyclones and disasters like earthquake. Yeah. So, uh, so in the last, uh, our last lecture is our today's webinar is on the topic of application of IoT devices in pollution monitoring. And for this, we have someone who is in experience in this field, Dr. Shalin Kumar. He is an assistant professor at the Center of Environmental Studies and Disaster Management Miranda House, University of Delhi. He is working in the field of environmental pollution monitoring and assessment for the last seven years as a JRF and SRF at the University of Delhi. And he has also worked in the Banaras Hindu University. He taught environmental science in different prestigious colleges of DU, such as Miranda House, IP College for Women, Hindu College, and Shama Prasad Mukherjee College. So I would request you, sir, to share your views on the topic. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Salinder, sir, you are not audible and your presentation is also not visible. Okay, I think I am audible now. Yes, sir. Uh, trying to put on full screen. You see the presentation.
Can you see the presentation? Yes, sir. So well, thank you very much, uh, Shreyas. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Bhos and Rajesh Sharma sir. I was listening continuously uh, to the uh, IoT applications, uh, uh, the uh, concept of the IoT. In front of these two senior engineers, I think I won't able to speak much on the technological aspect, but still I'll try to manage that. Uh, how do we monitor the environmental pollution and how uh, this technique can be uh, great for monitoring the environmental pollution uh, of different spheres. So I'll just uh, talk about the application application aspect and uh, where all these uh, pollution monitoring is going on continuously, what all the different agencies which are working. So. Uh, I'll cover uh, these things uh, during my presentations where basic understanding, I assume that everyone of us have that, uh, you know, all different kinds of pollution. And I'll compare these uh, two things that is the classical pollution monitoring, how expensive it was. And now when IoT enters, uh, then uh, how the pollution monitoring will be uh, like. And uh, in Indian context, that uh, how we are doing it, uh, our different agencies are using the IoT for monitoring the environmental pollution. So uh, I don't think we I have to explain these basic things about the environment. It is a physical, chemical, and biological alteration in any property of soil, water, and any sort of in any sphere that is basically the environmental pollution. And this is how generally the uh, pollution cycle goes on in the environment where uh, from different sources, like uh, if here we can see air pollution and then the leachate of these industries that, that will go to the soil and it rotate it equal in the ecology of uh, ecology, it will rotate and different pollutant goes into different spheres for just the pollution. Not we all know that there are uh, different uh, types of pollutions, water pollution, air pollution, soil pollution, and what are the sources, what are the causes of the pollution. Uh, I'm not going to stress on all of these things because these are very general these days. And all of uh, so uh, municipal wastewater, industrial wastewater that directly goes to the water resources which is our rivers and ultimately to the oceans. The toxic and highly toxic uh, uh, pollutants, they enter into the, uh, the, uh, the water resources. Now, if we see that uh, these basic concepts about the pollution that I'm just uh, passing on because I'm giving glimpse of it. This is the condition of our oceans. Thermal pollution is also because of the, uh, because of the industries thermal power plants, nuclear power plants, and air pollution, which was also the main cause uh, of the global warming and uh, excess of CO2 in the atmosphere. Similarly, land pollution, which is, we, we can also call that uh, solid waste, which is very high, and noise pollution. So, uh, we all know about all these pollutions. Now, I, I want to compare that, what is the importance of IoT? Uh, which replace which replace the classical pollution monitoring techniques, which was very costly. So for uh, doing the classical monitoring, we have to reach to the water resources, water bodies, and then we need to select the different sites. And on those sites, we have to visit uh, the places, and we need to find out the accessibility that where we have to. Uh, go and find out those places and monitor them uh, for different parameters. We have to bring out the samples seasonally with all the different data metrics and all. So it was a tedious task and difficult task to reach to a, every point. So because nationwide, if we look at the, this is just, I'm giving an example of Delhi's river Yamuna, but if we have to go out uh, for different rivers in our country, so it will be really difficult. 
So, uh, and the parameters that we measure into uh, these rivers or water bodies, whatever, lakes, ponds, it will be really difficult to reach out all the time. But once, uh, and, and after bringing those samples, what we have to do is that we have to go through these uh, uh, extremely costly instruments, like I'm showing here, uh, atomic absorption spectrophotometer, inductively coupled plasma, mass spectroscopy, which gives us analysis of uh, different toxic metals and different metals and cations and ions. And we need to carry these multi-parameters with us to monitor it. So the whole process is extremely costly and uh, it, it doesn't give us the proper accurate analysis. That's what I feel after knowing about the IoT uh, analysis and uh, accuracy assessment by the IoT technique in the uh, in by different agencies these days. So uh, this this monitoring classical monitoring system was very cost effective. And then further we have to do other analysis using various statistical tool, and we need many collaborator to do this job. So that was the classical pollution monitoring system that many of us, uh, those who are from environmental background, they may know about it, but and now probably uh, have some idea about it. Now, if we look at the IoT-based pollution monitoring, the application of IoT. So uh, I think I don't need to explain after Rajesh Sharma said that what is IoT and what is its uh, uh, the device, how it works. But still, uh, if we look at these devices, which can monitor water, air, soil, and noise, uh, solid waste uh, by using simple sensors and the uh, device which is attached to it, which is uh, uh, which is called the um, IoT device, and it sends from this point of view, it sends the data to the base stations. So I'm here explaining an example of different types of water pollution and along with that how iot helping to monitor that so i was just talking about the rivers but if we take the example of marine water so marine area is you know too much and going in deep into those uh, 100 kilometer inside the oceans to monitor that what is the condition of pollution there it is extremely tedious there are some programs by usgs and uh, uh, that is going on but it is uh, it takes a lot of uh, money to do so but nowadays when we have developed these iot devices uh, that have uh, common iot based uh, architectural structure which have different layers uh, uh, already in these small devices which is perception and aggregation layer data transmission layer data uh, pre-processing layer application layer business layer out of those data we can also prepare the business models so uh, here we can understand that how if we are send uh, putting these devices into the oceans to monitor the quality and condition of the water there so we can see here that uh, there are sensor nodes actuator nodes sync nodes a base station a system server and then user terminals that is we have our, our smartphones laptops computer so the old data that are monitoring on that time in the real time which is being sent through the cloud networking into through internet to the main server from base station. And then it is, uh, it can be accessible in that second where it is monitoring in the oceans. So this is how, this is very fast and time consuming, cost effective. There are many factors we can uh, look after uh, seeing this particular uh, IoT based monitoring of the oceans. Similar in similar fashions, we can also do uh, river monitoring. We can also do air pollution monitoring. Of course, there are several challenges also face uh, these IoT technique also facing, like standardization of the devices, which is which we need to do regularly. So there are some techniques uh, that can be implemented in the sensor development. So sensor development should be uh, in a in a way it should be like uh, important at uh, using some important techniques so that we don't need to do it again and again uh, and we have some uh, duration of time so it will also save the cost of uh, monitoring then energy management is also important if our devices are in the tides and waves and deep inside the ocean so it will 
uh, take energy because energy is not much there. So high quality batteries and all that is also required for those instruments. And uh, from marine environment protection, that is also required because the uh, weather of uh, ocean, inside the oceans are very variable. So that is what we, uh, we can do using the IoT devices. We can monitor all our spheres, whether it is air, whether it is water, whether it is different water bodies, whether it is different, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in the oceans also. So that is the application. Now, if you look at it in our Indian context, uh, we can see that uh, our agency, which is uh, under Ministry of Environment and Forest, which shows that Central Pollution Control, Control Board basically uh, put such device, which, uh, which we can look here uh, at, in different positions. And they, these are basically stationary devices. And it's uh, on different rivers with the help of uh, state pollution control boards. They have put these devices uh, in that, and nowadays there, there are also movable devices are, are available, and those devices they are continuously taking the data of like biological oxygen demand, dissolved oxygen demand, conductivity, pH, temperature, all the sensors they have attached to this uh, stationary monitor system, and the data in the real time we can access from the uh, uh, the website, which is kind of. Uh, the interface between the user and the and the uh, CPCB also developed several uh, applications. So here we can see that thumbs down that POD is 3.88, which is not good on this particular location, which is called Pandu Breeze, right in our uh, some part of our country. And this is uh, uh, the air pollution monitoring, which is also uh, similarly going on using the technique. So this is. Uh, I have just taken the screenshot near the Rohini and IDM area where we can uh, see these dots. These are green and they are changing on the color code basis. We can find out that what is the air quality of that particular zone. I can also show the uh, retrieval, retrieval data on the CPCB website to help uh, those who are using still the classical monitoring system, which is very costly. Similarly, uh, Indian Institute of Meteorological Department, Indian Meteorological Department, they, they are also running the SUFFER program, which is uh, air quality monitoring program. They have set various uh, st monitoring stations and the continuous data of uh, different gases pollutant, different uh, uh, particulate pollutant are continuously coming. In. And that is what the, the they have put IoT devices in, uh, on those places. So that is the benefit of uh, IoT. That is the application of IoT, which environmentalist can use. So with that, I can conclude that IoT-based architecture development in pollution or environmental monitoring is required to replace those costly techniques, which I'm continuously uh, talking about. Data information accuracy is very high because in a second, in a fraction of second, we can take several readings on one place and we can take uh, readings on uh, in depth, different depths. So many ki kind of data can be generated in a very cost effective manner and real time monitoring wherever we need the information. We don't need to wait for the seasons and we don't need to wait for the uh, to plan all those sampling bottles and the PVC bottles to go on the sites. So uh, if we have the different IoT based monitoring stations already installed by the government agencies and also corporate agencies. So these data instantly we can utilize and uh, uh, can be used for the decision support and making policies. And uh, thank you for that. But uh, before thank you, I just want to show that how we can take these real time data from CPCB website. So, uh, I need to share entire screen. Uh, you can start again, just stop sharing and then start again, sir.
it visible sir yes yes sir it's, it's visible like this is uh, this is the imd website the safar website which shows the uh, data for which we can access from here all of these data uh, were collected and continuously these observations observations are coming on what let loan we are and what sort of uh, pollutants are there on different locations. This is for the air pollutions. And they are also calculating these AQI and continuously they are putting in public domain. Like if we look at the water quality data and we uh, search for it, we have to reach out to the CPCB website. And here we can see that air, water and noise data. For all sort of pollutants, it, it has been already done. So now if I go to water quality data and I see automatic monitoring data. Now, here we can see that uh, in different part of the country, these uh, datas are coming directly. Here we can see map and the location image and also the data of BOD, DO, conductivity, pH, temperature. We don't need to do it by our own. And just for ground truthing, we can do it once or twice, but we can uh, complete the whole study by using these uh, real-time water quality monitoring data. Similarly, air quality monitoring data is also available, or noise is also available. So that is the application, which I feel that uh, very important IoT application for the environment list. And as we know that environmental pollution is also one of the slow and biggest disaster we are facing. We can use, the, utilize these techniques and we can uh, do some study and we can uh, put out some policies and uh, real time monitoring data in front of the uh, in research or something. So that's that's from my side. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, this opportunity, Professor Ghosh and Dr. Garima Agrawal and Shreyas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your presentation, your time and expertise. Thank you very much, sir. And, uh, and on behalf of NIDM, I would like to share you a token of thanks or gratitude. Uh, it will be shared with you on your email id very soon sir thank you thank you so much <laughs> okay very nice presentation thank you sir thank you very much your guidance sir huh? your guidance works to me so participants you are free if you want to ask anything to professor ghosh or dr selender you can write your queries in the chat box or you if you want you can just raise your hand and i can unmute yourself and i think we are done for today so, uh, yeah we can uh, have you uh, ended the program on the feedback and the feedback form is yeah uh, ma'am uh, it will be activated after five o'clock, I think. I have uh, shared the information in the chat box that after this webinar, participants uh, have to submit their you feedback can on the portal. In, uh, before, uh, like uh, by four forty-five or something. Right? You can give a just live demo of what how they are going to send the feedback. Just you go to an IDM website. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Huh? Okay, sir. I'm I'm going to because do that. we are talking about IoT, so that it also be in the IoT. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> have to do it live. Okay, sir. Uh, let me let me show you the. I have clicked the wrong application, and now it's opening, and it will take time. And also uh, share the link for the feedback. And we would be really happy to have the feedback on the chat box also, as we get encouraged by hearing you. That whether, because it is a different kind of webinar we have hold today. 
yes so ma'am we try to do some live demonstration and something and i really would like to congratulate mr rajesh sharma for organizing this live demonstration and uh, to showcase that how to use these iot devices for early warning system uh, for fire safety management at least and uh, of course i can't thank enough professor ghosh for helping us in organizing this important topics webinar so it has been really i think my screen is visible to all the participants yeah, yeah. and you have to just go to the portal and here is uh, you have to fill your login credentials your email id and your password and do the login then in the enrolled events or completed events enrolled events will show the events in which you have enrolled and the completed events will be where the events is completed and you have to submit the feedback so go in the completed events part like here and see there are one two three four uh, for me showing if i submit the feedback and then an id will generate a certificate for me so i am just going to uh, submit a feedback here uh, no uh, not this one ours one where is this iot sir uh, that will be open after 5 o'clock sir just see that what is the enrolled event go to the enrolled event show them that this is the event uh, no sir no in this uh, i think i have not uh, uh, what about it? Is it showing upcoming event? At least we want to see in this list. Uh, list of what, event. sir? Huh? List of our uh, program. It should be in this list, no? Somewhere today? Actually, yes, if you have not enrolled, the list will not, uh, the program will not uh, come no. in the list. Sir. That is why I told that you. This please, is, uh, this is, uh, yeah. This is, this is the event if I enroll. Yeah. And then it, it will show in the enrolled events. And uh -huh. here uh, the things will come, sir. Let, uh, let me give you, uh, give them the example or demonstration. In the, uh, uh, all event, if they uh, come in this portal and they will come to the tab under completed events, if they have uh, enrolled for that, uh, after the event complete, they will see a feedback button here in action. Mm -hmm. Just click on that and you have to submit these questions from an idea about webinar. How, um, uh, how useful was it? Uh, is there any suggestions? Uh, so you can type uh, or uh, you can write a suggestion in the ninth number of question. And there are eight questions on different parameters, and you have to uh, rate us uh, our webinar or our event. But how event. to rate this? It is all showing in a. Yes, sir. Like uh, I think uh, there is a question, and there is uh, five points. You have to just mark it like this. Oh, like marking this. is done that way. Okay. Yes, sir. Agree. Practical orientation of the program. Okay. Very high. This uh, in this way when you uh, do these things and submit a remark if you want that is not necessary and uh, then submit uh, you have to put mm -hmm. all the questions then you submit then if you submit it will show like this I am showing not eligible because I was uh, not enrolled. Uh, <laughs> Nay, no, I was enrolled in this, this program, but I was entered in the program like this time. I have joined the program uh, with the NIDM portal, not my uh, personal uh, uh, ID. So that is why it is showing like this. If I have joined that program with my personal ID, then it will generate from me, for me. Uh, uh, like I uh, currently, uh, I am joined the this webinar from NIDM portal. Uh, it is uh, not showing my name. It is showing that uh, uh, National Disaster Management, I think, na, behind my screen. So, yeah. participants, yeah, participants will join from uh, their own uh, uh, ID. So, then when they submit the feedback, they can see here 
their certificate and they can download it from here. Yeah, generation of certificate takes time of about you know eight eight to ten days. After the after submission of feedback, there is one more thing it's which not is attendance. Instantly, you will not get. So that is which the is attendance. When the attendance uh, would be uploaded on the portal, like this, when you submit the feedback, this type of window will be there. Your report after the program and the certificate, and you can click on the certificate and it will be downloaded like this. So I think now okay. participants can. Yes, sir. OK, fine. I think they might have understood. So should I? Hmm? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Time. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I think now we are towards the end of uh, today's webinar on a very important topic. Uh, IoT use of IoT devices on early warning system, and we had a lot of lot of new learnings arrived from today's webinar. Professor Ghosh, who spoke about various technologies available for early warning system and application, and how infrastructure response can be monitored by IoT, how rainfall and floods mapping can be done and used to predict the early warning system. We also uh, enjoyed uh, the demonstration of the process on how the message will be generated through IoT devices application and how clearly we could receive the information about fire incident which may occur in our office area, residential area, or uh, the area which is related to us. And this application will help us in early evacuation and fast response, and we can plan our response beforehand, which will be, uh, again, an added advantage and the connecting node to early warning system. These systems would require service providers network and by Wi-Fi to connect with the concerned uh, persons. The applications will also uh, provide the login details, log details and how many messages are sent, received, failed, or the complete status report, not only by call, but also SMS can be received uh, through, the, uh, through the application, these IoT application. Uh, thereafter, we had uh, another, uh, like a resume, Professor Ghosh had resumed his presentation and he spoke about the uh, wireless sensor networks, how cloud solutions, artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc. should be connected through the gateways and should be integrated uh, and the communication through the mobile is also possible. So uh, we uh, had uh, several examples from COT monitoring instrument you spoke about which was very useful, which can be used in school, offices, and conference halls and all to measure the indoor pollution. And uh, you spoke about LoRa technology and how it can be used for customizing and collated with GIS application to create early warning knowledge. How uh, these information can help in protecting life and infrastructure. Talk about the shake alert uh, application, how, track, uh, how to track real-time seismic waves, fault ruptures, current locations and infrastructure warning systems can be done. And Dr. Shalindra uh, Kumar also discussed about how these IoT devices it can be used for pollution monitoring. And he compared how classical methods of monitoring was expensive and, and the time-taking activity than the IoT devices, especially with the case study of uh, uh, water pollution, he tried to mention that. He shared various applications which are already available on the websites like Suffer and CPCB website he referred to through which the forecasting of monitoring of by using IoT devices is being done to measure water quality, air quality, weather reports and all. And such hazard, such applications can be used for hazard monitoring and uh, early warning strength, system strengthening and all. So with this uh, way forward, I think a lot of new learnings are there. And uh, for this, I thank my executive director, Shivtaj Hassan, for providing us this opportunity to plan the webinar on this important topic. I thank Mr. Rajesh Sharma, Mr. Srinidhi Thakur, Professor Ghosh, and Dr. Shalind Kumar for being present in the panel and share their views and knowledge on the topic, which is one of its own kind. We had few illustrations and comments from the participants, which shows that how much the topics uh, are of interest for the participants. And there is a lot of research which is available, and we need to share such topics, uh, I think, more often 
uh, there are still certain questions going on in the chat box. I can see two or three, which uh, and uh, so many good comments about the presenters making uh, the demonstration and presentations on different different important areas. Uh, I think it has been quite a successful event today. Uh, the question I would like to read, how many local bodies are trained in this regard? So it is a new initiative, sir, and uh, uh, we have just started uh, sensitizing uh, people on this. Whenever we have any training programs and all, if uh, it is concerned to the early warning system, we don't give a such specific training on this particular topic. We, uh, it is only a sensitization from our side. Training, it is, a, it is a technical subject. So an IDM is yet to give any such training on this particular aspect. That is my take on this. But Professor Bush, if you want to add something on this, we, we are, have we done any local body training on this particular topic? So these are the things doesn't need any training in local bodies or whoever is having some budget, they can connect like the way that we buy our mobile phone or any other devices, electronic devices. So uh, for that, we do not take any training. So there are customized devices available to all the participants and everyone, local bodies, whoever you are uh, referring to, let them come to know these things in India Mart. Very many such solutions are available with their price tags are written there. And as far as installation for a particular like we have been, uh, uh, we have, uh, inter we had the interaction with the, uh, uh, Mr. Rajan, uh, Rajesh Kumarji, uh, that uh, we would like to see their devices uh, at their office uh, where they are uh, fabricating all these things. And we, we sometimes welcome also. And even like institution like ours, where we have got our new campus, there are uh, many such uh, things are installed like smart classroom. So we have uh, floated the tender and then got the specification and then they came, they installed, they trained us there itself. So whenever any specific applications are there, so uh, you can invite or you can see that float a tender or an expression of interest, then see that in the market, what are the prices are there, whether it is available in government e-marketing or not, and then you can connect with the experts, not only experts, mostly vendors are there. Price you can negotiate or whatever system is there in Government of India, uh, then you can install. So for that, in fact, uh, in fact, in an IDM kind of training institution, yes, uh, we uh, have to have a certain kind of science uh, exhibition kind of things to show these things, but our aim is not in this technology-based things, but as far as disaster management application, early warning is concerned, yes, uh, we should have a such kind of devices installed in our uh, dedicated room for uh, live demonstration of these products, whether it is earthquake early, early warning system, whether it is fire early warning system, fire, and all these things should have in this kind of institution. But there are certain institutions like I have mentioned about National Center for Seismology, like uh, Dr. Shailendra has shown about the software system maintained by uh, uh, the Indian mm -hmm. Institute of Tropical, uh, uh, India Institute of uh, Material, Department. Uh, Meteorological Department, IMD or IITM. Uh, so they are having a dedicated laboratory as well as demonstration and live simulation room. So they, whenever you find a chance, you visit them. So they will have that particular system. Uh, but whereas uh, in the disaster management application of these things are something like that, uh, products are available, only integration of them and customizing them for a particular application. Uh, yes, it is not only an IDM, but many of your institutions where you are working, uh, you can have a direct interface with the people that who are developing or the markets uh, that where such devices are available. So much, sir. So I think now we can enter today's session. And thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.